I know it's a little bit late, but this is going to be my 2023 MLB mock draft. The draft starts tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. I'll be streaming watching the draft live on YouTube, so make sure you are subscribed so that you don't miss out. Drop a like on the video if you're excited for all the draft content coming at you because I'm going to have a ton of videos as soon as the draft is over. Follow me on all my social media at GiraffeNeckMark. Links in the description. But first, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, SoRare MLB. SoRare is the best way to play fantasy baseball this season. I've been absolutely addicted. And it's absolutely free for you guys to play. And you get to play against me and the rest of the Giraffe Neck Mark community by clicking the link in the description. It will take you to so Rare and put you immediately into my private league so that you can play against me. What's great about so Rare is that you get to draft a team of your favorite players and use those cards immediately on the game. Just like fantasy baseball, when they play well, you score more points. And the more points you score, the better rewards you can win. Plus, with different scarcity of cards, there's different tournaments that you can join to end up winning better rewards. You can see I have three different teams rocking this week. In Limited All-Star, I'm just inside the top 1,000 and I need to score 26 more points in order to win a reward. And you can only enter this competition by having limited cards, which you can get by either finishing highly in different tournaments, purchasing limited cards on the market, or even buying some of the pre-made starter packs that SoRare has made. You can also play SoRare MLB absolutely free, like I said. You can see my teams in the minors and common all-star tournaments not doing so well. So if you're interested in fantasy baseball, SoRare MLB is the place to be. Make sure you click the link in my description to join my private league and sign up for SoRare absolutely free today and see if you've got what it takes to beat me in fantasy baseball. Thank you to SoRare for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to it. The Pittsburgh Pirates have the number one overall pick and despite the rumors going around right now, I think they have to take Dylan Cruz outfielder out of LSU. Dylan Cruz is simply the best player in the entire draft in my opinion. He is a guy who should be a quick riser to Major League Baseball. He has got all the tools. He's a five-tool player. Like there's pretty much nothing not to like about Dylan Cruz. The only reason why he might not go number one overall is because he wants a ton of money, which also makes sense. He should want a lot of money if he's going to be the number one overall pick. So while there definitely is a little bit of worry that if you take Dylan Cruz number one overall and don't pay him, he won't sign. I think the Pirates call his bluff, take him number one overall, and still break the record for the highest paid player ever at number one, just not at the $10 million he's asking for. With the second overall pick, the Washington Nationals are up, and I think they take Dylan Cruz's teammate, Paul Skeens, who also could be number one. He's disgusting. Paul Skeens is without a doubt the best pitcher in the entire draft. He's filthy. He's disgusting. He's a Steven Strasburg type prospect, if for those of you who remember when he was getting drafted. This is a guy who will also be in the major leagues very, very soon. Throws 100 miles an hour. He was the most dominant pitcher in college. He's got a filthy, filthy slider. He's rocking like a 50% K rate and doesn't walk anybody in college baseball. Paul Skeens is nasty. He's either going one or two. There's no way he goes anywhere else. For the third overall pick, the Detroit Tigers are up, and I have them selecting Wyatt Langford, outfielder out of University of Florida. If Wyatt Langford was in any other draft, he would be the clear number one overall pick. The Tigers are getting an absolute stud here at three. He is another five tool player all around fantastic but, i mean you're looking at a guy who had like a 1200 ops on the season super strong incredible exit velos he is a five tool player with the fourth overall pick in the draft the texas rangers are up and i have them selecting max clark outfielder out of high school in indiana max clark is the best high school prospect in the entire draft there's a chance he even goes number one he's that talented in terms of physical tools he is an absolute freak the guy runs for days he's incredibly strong great exit velos no doubt will be a center fielder has a hose of an arm there's nothing not to like about max clark and apparently if max Clark's there, the Rangers are taking him. So yeah, Max Clark, fourth overall. Finishing out the top five, the Minnesota Twins are up, and I have them selecting the next high school outfielder, Walker Jenkins, out of North Carolina. Talk about a freak of a human. Walker Jenkins is a massive high schooler. He's six foot three, 210 pounds, and a really, really good athlete. We're looking at a 60 hit and power tool. He runs 55, 60 arm, 50 field, like all around. Walker Jenkins, again, is another one of these great players. One of the most talented top fives we have seen in a very long time. And personally, it's one of my favorite swings in the entire draft. Like, watch this guy guy swing in the videos that I put out later this week, you'll be like, oh, that guy's good. Coming in at number six overall to the Oakland A's, which is always difficult to predict because they just do whatever they want. I'm going with Braden Taylor, third baseman out of TCU. I think that Jacob Wilson could go as high as number six right here to the A's, but a lot of people are mocking Braden Taylor and it makes sense. The dude absolutely mashed at TCU. He had a great college world series run as well. He's got a beautiful left-handed swing. He just does everything well. There's a lot to like about Braden Taylor and I think he'd be a very nice pick for the A's at number six. With the seventh overall pick, the Cincinnati Reds are up and I have them selecting Chase Dolander out of University of Tennessee, right-handed pitcher. Dolander has been sliding on a lot of people's drafts, but personally for me, I'm still in love with what I saw in 2022 where Dolander was arguably the best pitcher in college baseball. This season was a little bit different, a little bit more difficulty, but Tennessee also just wasn't as dominant. What I saw out of Dolander though that I love is a great fastball with a good slider. He's also got a very solid curveball, good control, good command, like everything that you would want out of a good pitcher with clean mechanics. To me, Dolander feels like a no-brainer as the second best 
college pitcher in the draft, and the Reds are a pitching factory. I just, I see like Dolander doing big things with them. So I have him going seven, even though a lot of people have him sliding. At the number eight spot, the Kansas City Royals are up. I have them selecting a college pitcher as well. This is gonna be Rhett Louder, right-handed pitcher out of Wake Forest. Rhett Louder, another one of these great college pitchers, was awesome at Wake Forest this past year. Big part of their College World Series run. While he doesn't have the big numbers that jump out to you, he doesn't throw 100 miles an hour, he doesn't have the nastiest breaking balls. He is overall probably one of the most complete pitchers, if not the most complete pitcher in the entire draft. Someone that you can mold and maybe get a little bit more out of a little more velo ticks here and there. But he's got kind of the hard stuff done. He knows how to pitch. Great command on his stuff. Just be a really solid pick for the Royals. Ninth overall is going to be the Colorado Rockies. And despite what I think they should do, the rumors are they're going to go with a pitcher. And the best one available to me right now would be Noble Meyer, right handed pitcher out of high school. Noble Meyer is the best high school arm in the entire draft class, in my opinion. Six foot five, 185 pounds. Another guy who's just got super clean mechanics. Stuff that I love when I'm drafting pitchers or thinking about people who should be drafted as a pitcher. Repeatable mechanics is always huge. He's got a big fastball that sits in the upper 90s. A really solid slider and a good changeup. I don't think the Rockies should ever draft pitchers. I think they should just lean in and only get hitters, but it seems like they're gonna go pitcher, and Noble Meyer would be the best one available in my mock right now. Rounding out the top 10, the Miami Marlins are up, and I have them taking local Florida kid Arjun Namala, shortstop from a high school in Florida. Arjun Namala simply is one of the biggest upside guys in the entire draft, and I think the Marlins should be getting a little bit risky with these picks. Don't play it safe. I know Khalil Watson hasn't worked out, but Arjun Namala is another one of these guys who has big upside that I think is worth it. He has crazy raw power and really good bat-to-ball skills thus far. He's been working out with Francisco Lindor in the offseason, which is pretty cool. I mean, that's like one of the best shortstops in the league. There definitely is inconsistency with his game, which scares some people, but Namala, to me, and a lot of people in the baseball world, is a super exciting prospect, and I really think the Marlins should take him here at 10. Next up, at the number 11 spot, we've got the Los Angeles Angels. I have them selecting outfielder out of Vanderbilt, Enrique Bradfield Jr. He is probably the best athlete in the entire draft. I mean, his run tool is out of this world. The guy is lightning fast, very good bat-to-ball skills. You're not going to see a lot of power just yet, but he puts the ball in play, runs for days, and is going to be a gold glove center fielder. And I think he'd be a really good add to that farm system for the Los Angeles Angels. At the number 12 spot, the Arizona Diamondbacks are up. Everybody has this guy going there. I do as well. Shortstop out of high school in Georgia, Colin Houck. Houck is committed to Mississippi State. You know he's a good ball player. The Diamondbacks just kind of take the best available guys normally, and Colin Houck would be one of them. All-around really good player with a great arm at shortstop, so he will stick there in my opinion. His bat speed, his strength gives him a lot of potential for some power in the future. And I mean, 6'2", 190? That's a great build. Colin Houck looks to be a solid pick. But the 13th overall pick, the Chicago Cubs are up, and I have them selecting Matt Shaw, shortstop out of University of Maryland. Shaw's a bit of a safer pick, but honestly, not really. He's just a very good player. While he might not stick at shortstop for the foreseeable future, because he does have a little bit of a weak arm, the hit and power tools are very solid, and he is a great athlete with a good run tool at 60. He really bumped his draft stock from the Cape Cod League, where he won the MVP, and he just simply might be one of the best college hitters in the entire draft. So, good pick here by the Cubs. With the 14th overall pick, sliding a little bit in my mock draft, I have the Red Sox selecting Kyle Teal out of University of Virginia, a catcher. Feels like the Red Sox could use a catcher, and if Kyle Teal is available at this spot, I think there's no doubt that they take him. A lot of people have Kyle Teal inside the top six, inside the top 10. I think he could be the Kevin Parada of this year's draft and just fall a little bit. The difference is he seems like a guy who's probably gonna stick a catcher, and he was the best catcher in college baseball this year. He's extremely athletic. He could play other positions if you want him to. The Red Sox have had a bunch of guys fall into their lap. I think Kyle Teal will be next. With a 15th overall pick, the Chicago White Sox will be selecting Jacob Wilson, shortstop out of Grand Canyon University. Jacob Wilson, son of Jack Wilson, former Major League All-Star with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Very, very good player. Honestly, in my opinion, might be one of the most well-rounded players in the entire draft. Jacob Wilson hit 412 with a 460 on base, 635 slugging, and almost an 1100 OPS this year at Grand Canyon. He only struck out five times in 217 plate appearances, walked 19, He's a very good fielder. I think he's going to stick at shortstop all around. Really good player. And I think this would be an awesome pick for the White Sox if they can get Jacob Wilson at 15. Big Jacob Wilson fan. With the 16th overall pick, the San Francisco Giants are up, and I have them selecting local kid, well, at least collegiately, Tommy Troy, shortstop out of Stanford. What makes Tommy Troy really interesting is that he consistently makes hard contact. You're not seeing crazy power numbers just yet, but the fact of the matter is he doesn't swing and miss often. He hits the ball consistently, and he hits it hard. Those are all things you love to see, and you know the Giants are a smart organization. They'll be able to sculpt this guy into whatever they want him to become. He's all around a very good player. With the 17th overall pick, the Baltimore Orioles are up, taking one of the most fun players, in my opinion, in the draft. First baseman and right-handed pitcher out of Madison High School in Virginia, Bryce Eldridge. Eldridge is six foot seven, 223 pounds. He is a two-way player, and there's a legitimate chance you might try and keep that going. On the mound, he throws mid to high 90s with a pretty solid slider, a sweet left-handed swing. Obviously, he's a huge human. He crushes the baseball. I probably didn't need to tell you that. So for me, Bryce Eldridge, left-handed swing, big power, yeah. 
put him in Baltimore. With the 18th overall pick, I have the Milwaukee Brewers selecting Jacob Gonzalez shortstop out of Ole Miss. And some of my original mocks that I never posted, I had Jacob Gonzalez going inside the top 10. I, honestly, to the Rockies, I thought it would be a great pick for them. Jacob Gonzalez is a beast. He has a ton of pop in his bat. He was one of the more anticipated prospects in college. Very solid hitter, 20 plus home run a year potential. Big, strong kid. Probably doesn't stick at shortstop. That might be the only thing. But for the Brewers, I feel like this would be a really nice pickup for them. The Tampa Bay Rays are up next at number 19, and I have them selecting another local kid, Aiden Miller, third baseman from a Florida high school. Aiden Miller is actually like a super good prospect, but he's fallen a little bit due to injury. But in terms of high school power, Aiden Miller is up there with some of the best. He has a cannon of an arm. He looks like he should be a third baseman for the future. If not, he can play first base because that bat is going to play. And I think there's just too good value here for the Rays to pass up on a local kid who could have been a top 10 pick if he was healthy. With the 20th overall pick, the Toronto Blue Jays are up, and I have them selecting Walker Martin shortstop out of high school in Colorado. Now, Walker Martin is a little interesting. Honestly, if he wasn't 19 years old in high school, might have gone even higher. Always scares people a little bit when you're 19 still in high school. But Walker Martin was a great athlete, a two-sport athlete in high school. Six foot two, 188, so he's got a really good build to put on some muscle. Good bat to ball skills. Just overall, again, another really good, well-rounded player. Might not stick at shortstop, might move to third, but he was very impressive in the high school season. With the 21st overall pick, I have the St. Louis Cardinals selecting first baseman slash outfielder out of Florida Atlantic, Nolan Shanuel. Shanuel might not be the greatest athlete, which is why you might do a little outfield first base with him, but the hit tool is legit. I mean, the guy has a 60 hit grade, 50 power. He's a big dude, six foot four, so the power can continue to get even better. I don't know what it is also. He just feels like a St. Louis Cardinal guy. I've been really good, weirdly, at predicting Cardinals draft picks recently, called Cooper Jerpy last year. I just have a feeling that Nolan Shanuel is going to be that guy in this draft. With the 22nd pick in the MLB draft, the Seattle Mariners are up, and I have them selecting Colt Emerson, third baseman slash shortstop out of Glen, Ohio. Emerson committed to Auburn, so you know he's a player. And he's got a really, really consistent, compact left-handed swing that makes you excited when you watch him play. He's got gap-to-gap -gap power, and his build and his swing makes you think that the power is going to eventually come even more. Colt Emerson's a guy who might even fly up these boards a little bit. Don't be surprised. But I have him going to the Mariners here at number 22. With the 23rd overall pick, the Cleveland Guardians are up, and I have them selecting Hurston Waldrop, right-handed pitcher out of University of Florida. I mean, he's just got some crazy good stuff, and I don't feel like the Guardians can help themselves when they see a pitcher with all the tools in the world to be great. We know what they're able to do to pitching prospects. How do they pass up on a guy like Kirsten Waldrop? Waldrop throws in the upper 90s with a disgusting splitter and a wipeout slider. Those three pitches right there make him a really good reliever at his floor and a very, very dangerously good starter at his peak. So a guy like Kirsten Waldrop, I think, in the Cleveland Guardians just makes way too much sense. With the 24th overall pick, I have the Atlanta Braves selecting George Lombard Jr., shortstop slash third baseman out of Gulliver Prep in Florida. I'm low-key, like, really drinking the George Lombard Kool-Aid. The more and more I've watched him play, the more I've fallen in love with that swing, the way that he plays the game. Six foot three, 190. Like, does he swing and miss? Yes. But does he have some crazy pop potential and power? Oh, 100%. And for me, I want guys with ceiling. And a guy like George Lombard Jr., to me, has a ton of ceiling and is going to be a nightmare for years and years to come if the Braves get him. But I think they're too smart of an organization to pass. With the 25th overall pick, the San Diego Padres are up. And I have them selecting Blake Mitchell, catcher out of Sinton, Texas. I don't know what it is, but I always have catchers fall in the draft. And I feel like they do. Blake Mitchell is awesome. He's a great player. This would be a great steal here for the Padres at number 25. Someone who ranks inside the top 15 on MLB Pipeline. He's got a hose. A hose. 70 arm grade. He's definitely not a great athlete. He's super, super slow. 35 run grade. Still though, committed to LSU. Great left-handed swing with a bunch of pop. Again, all these guys have like a lot of pop and really good hit potential. He's also extremely patient at the plate. Something I think the Padres should take a look at. Blake Mitchell feels like you gotta pick him if he's still there. With the 26th overall pick, the New York Yankees are up and everybody and their mother has been saying they're getting Sammy Stafora. Shortstop out of Walter Panis High School in the state of New York. So a local kid. Stafora is gonna be a little bit more of a project. He also is a little bit of a smaller guy coming in only at six feet. But he has gained a lot of strength this past summer that is leading to more hard exit velos, better contact, a little more pop. He drives the ball to all fields, and he's an excellent athlete and runner. Put those all together. It's for the makings of a player who could be great for the New York Yankees. I know they have Anthony Volpe. doesn't matter. This is the draft. You take the best guy that you think is available, and I think the Yankees are going Sammy Stafora. Next up at number 27, the Philadelphia Phillies are up, and I have them taking Chase Davis, outfielder out of University of Arizona. Now, Chase Davis might be someone you're familiar with because his swing looks exactly like Carlos Gonzalez's. If he can have even a tenth of the career like Carlos Gonzalez, it's going to be a great pick for the Phillies. While Davis does have some swing and miss potential, he has some serious pop in that bat. Very athletic build. Maybe could play the little center, probably more so corners and a good arm. The power profile he has is legit and worth a pick here in the first round. With the 28th overall pick, the Houston Astros are up. I have them selecting Yohandi Morales out of the University of Miami. The U. Yohandi is a guy who could go as early as like the top 15. I have him fallen a little bit here though and it has nothing to do with his play. He's really good. I mean, the dude absolutely rakes. Yohandi has one of the
of the best swings that I at least saw in college baseball. And he hit 400 this year in the ACC, which is a great baseball conference. 20 home runs, 70 RBIs, with an 1187 OPS. The dude absolutely rakes. And it feels like, man, those Crawford boxes, he'd be very happy to call that place home. That is technically the last pick of the first round, but I'm going to continue on because there are a few more picks here. The Mariners have the 29th overall pick because of Julio Rodriguez last year, which is really cool. And I think they're going to capitalize and take Charlie Soto, a right-handed pitcher, out of Florida. Well, a high school in Florida. Charlie Soto's sick. And honestly, I don't, I can't wrap my head around how he's not even like a top 15 guy. He's 17 years old. He's 6'5", 210. He's a good guy. I mean, he does like all this charity off the field as well. And he throws like 98, touching 100 with a really good slider and a solid change. I don't understand why he would fall this late, but nobody has him going very early. I think he's one of the better pitching prospects in the entire draft. And if the Mariners get him here at number 29, wow, what a steal this could end up being. The Mariners also have the next pick at number 30. They have three picks in the first round. This is crazy crazy for a farm system. And I have them selecting Kevin McGonigal, middle infielder out of a high school in Pennsylvania. McGonigal has been described as one of the best pure hitters in the entire draft class. He's not a great athlete. He's probably going to play second base. But in terms of bat to ball skills, people are saying he's up there with some of the best in the entire draft. This could be an absolutely mega awesome draft if they get a guy like Kevin McGonigal. At number 31, the Tampa Bay Rays are up and I have them selecting Ty P, shortstop out of Trinity Christian in Georgia. Ty P just got the Rays written all over him. Another 17 year old prospect, which I think is also super important, by the way, that you guys should keep in mind. If you're like 17 coming into the draft, huge advantage if you're very good, and Ty Pete is good. While there are some hit tool concerns. Power, arm, and speed is up there, and that's something that the Rays definitely like. He's also a good fielder, probably will stick at shortstop. They always like to take up the middle. They're always looking for those good athletes with good tools, and Ty Pete just feels like he's going to be that guy for them. Finally, my New York Mets up at number 32, and I have them selecting Ty Floyd, right-handed pitcher out of LSU, someone who has flown up the draft boards because of his performance in the College World Series. Floyd has a fastball that tops out in the upper 90s, kind of sits in the mid to high 90s. A very solid slider, good curveball, good change. Four pitches for a pitcher in the draft is awesome. Awesome. And like I said, this past season was great. The College World Series run, he was really, really good. Someone that I think the Mets are definitely going to take a look at. And if he's there, I hope they take. Lots of picks in the competitive balance round. Next up is the Milwaukee Brewers at number 33. I have them selecting Thomas White, left-handed pitcher out of Phillips Academy in Massachusetts. White is a big left-handed pitcher. Six foot five, 210 pounds, 18 years old, of course, coming out of high school. And he's got a big fastball that's touched the upper 90s. A curveball with super high spin rates. These feel like things that the Brewers are all going to love. These feel like things that all teams should love. Good young pitcher, Milwaukee Brewers put them together, you might have an ace on your hands. Thomas White, number 33. At the number 34 spot, the Minnesota Twins come back here for Brock Wilkin, third baseman out of Wake Forest. Big, 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 big fan of Brock Wilkin. Someone I think could sneak up, maybe inside the top 20. 31 home runs and 15 doubles this past season with Wake Forest. So yeah, he can hit for some power. He also walked 11 more times than he struck out. 69 to 58, nice. And he finished with a 13-13 OPS this year. Again, Brock Wilkins, one of these guys that people have falling late. I don't really understand why, because he absolutely mashes. This would be a great pick by the Twins. At number 35, the Marlins are back up, and I have them selecting Dylan Head, outfielder out of Homewood, Flossmoor in Illinois. Dylan Head's going to be a project. You're taking him because he's a sick athlete. He has an 80 run tool. For those of you at home, that's, that's pretty fast. He's also a great outfielder. He's going to play center field. Got to work on the hit tool, definitely, and there's not really that much power right now. But the athletic ability is what you're going to draft and head on. And I think at 35, the Marlins, again, can get a little risky here. With the 36 overall pick, the Dodgers are finally on the board here. I have them selecting Johnny Farmello, outfielder out of Westfield High School in Virginia. Weird, because I'm from Westfield, New Jersey. Not the same. Farmello is a great athlete, which is something that the Dodgers always seem to look to prioritize as a guy who can run a little bit, which is going to help him, obviously, offensively and defensively. He's got good barrel skills, which make you feel kind of encouraged about what his offensive potential could be. And he's got a really good build at 6'2", 205. So, just makes sense for the Dodgers, who make prospects out of anything. Imagine what they can do with this. Kid. 37th overall pick, Detroit Tigers are back up, and I have them selecting third baseman slash shortstop out of Aquinas High School in California, Eric Batanti. Batanti is built like a friggin' moose. Six foot four, 218 coming out of high school. Like, where, where do you even do that? How does that work? It was like five foot nine, 135 pounds. Regardless, it's not about me, it's about Eric. I think this would be a really fun pick for the Tigers. They got Wyatt Langford, get a little risky, get a guy with a really, really big potential ceiling. Because with that size, with that swing, at only 17 years old, this is a super intriguing prospect. Second to last pick of the video at number 38 the Cincinnati Reds are back and I have them selecting third baseman out of University of Virginia Jake Geloff you're probably familiar with his brother a third base prospect in the Oakland A system Zach Jake is also just as good this year at Virginia 23 homers 23 doubles 90 RBIs which is just such a high number 321 average 427 on base 710 slugging and 1137 OPS I think the Reds go with a hitter with their second pick after taking a pitcher first he might not have a position but they're not 
really worried about that. They're putting guys everywhere. He's got a great bat. Feels like a good fit. And then for the last pick of today's video, the last pick of like the hypothetical first round, the Oakland A's are up at number 39, and I have them selecting Brandon Sprout, right-handed pitcher out of University of Florida. Sprout is another one of these guys I could see going very early because the stuff is really good. He was a third-round pick by the Mets last year. They weren't able to sign him away, which stinks because I think he's really awesome. But Sprout gives you a plus fastball that's in the mid to upper 90s, a very solid slider, good changeup, and he's working on a curveball that needs a little bit of help. This will be the third time that this guy's drafted. People want him. They just can't sign him away. Maybe the A's can't because maybe he wants money, but he also has no other choice now. He improved his command a lot this past year at Florida. Someone I think could be a very good pitcher in the future for Oakland or Las Vegas. So that's my mock draft. I appreciate you guys sticking around this long to hear about all these prospects. There's going to be so many videos coming out as the draft is going on. There's going to be a stream, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on that. I know there was no highlights in this video. I'm going to save the highlights for the big ones that come after the draft because I just don't want to keep showing you the same highlights over and over again. Thank you guys for being patient. I know the mock draft is coming out like very close to the time of the actual draft, but it's been a lot going on in my apartment, travel, all that stuff. Appreciate the amazing support you guys continue to give on the channel. Follow me on all my social media at Mark. Links are in description. That's where I'm going to wrap it up, guys. You know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video. This is my most recent upload, so click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for the MLB draft as well as all the content that's coming out. Bye!